Good morning, Belgrade. I always imagine to do that. I had a dream, and unfortunately, I was awakened with a huge pain in my stomach. I was feeling most probably what you will call the void pointer, but you, today it's more like doing of a jar, uh, of a garbage collector. Because a couple of months back, my wife, my nutrition, and yes, I have a nutrition, and my smart refrigerator is fighting to sustain my health and fighting against my compulsion eating. So my refrigerator is tweeting and sending information whenever I come near the refrigerator. And he sent it to my wife, unfortunately, all over the internet, so almost anybody can see whenever I like to eat something, especially sweets. And I think that my refrigerator is not counting my calories, it's counting my thoughts. I like to take some calories, but it forbids me. And yes, yesterday, for instance, I was going to my appointment to my, with my nutrition, and during this drive in a vehicle where I was all by myself and the vehicle was driving me there, I was thinking, should I lie? Should I say that I have not taken this sweet chocolate bar? But I was smarter than that. I know that in a split second, my nutrition would get all my data, what I have been eaten for the last month, all the calories, all the good stuff, especially what I like to call a healthy cholesterol. Is there a such thing? But I know that I should not lie, because I will be caught up very easily and there will be even more drastic measures against, against me. So, the funny part was that at the moment that I was confronting with my nutrition, which is better than confronting my wife, I was kind of thinking, how this is odd. They are fighting with the tools that my friends and I are made. We build this system that produce this data from my refrigerator and from my car and from my house all the way back to the people that are in need of such data. And yes, it works against me in a way, and that's what's puzzling me, because it's fight back to me because they are fighting against my wish to satisfy my appetite, but they are fighting for me because they are wish to sustain my health. So I'm kind of in a strange mood. Is this good or bad? Is this good that I share that information with my loved ones and my people that cares about me? Is it good that people that maybe don't care about me even can get hold in that information? What should I do? Is it good or bad? And as I said, the funny part is, friends and me, we build this stuff. And we laugh a couple of years back when you think that a Skynet is a joke. Have you think about that? So, what I'd like to tell, talk to you today is about the Internet of Things. And what you heard, it wasn't my dream at all. Maybe it's not still the reality, but it's very near. It's not that far away. It's something that will be built partially today and most probably in a couple of years. And you will be the ones that will bring that future. Hopefully we meet together. So, I want to share with you some of my thoughts and some of the research that smart people all over the globe are doing. And somehow to play with you also to get a sense what this Internet of Things really means. But before that, let me get introduced. My name is Dejan Dimic, and some of you 
have worked with me before, some of you are my friends, colleagues, and as it said, currently I'm working as the Vice President of Engineering in a company called Smite Macro, and the software that I have mentioned is partially in a domain that we are working. Also, I'm a passionate programmer, and I am all try to develop software every day, besides the other activities that I'm involved in. I am co-founder of some programmers group here in Serbia. I also participate in uh, standardization bodies that deal with the standards in mobile industry. And in general, I try to be as productive in my passion, which is this software development. But I will have, uh, have time to, and hope to have time during this conference to meet you all. So we we'll exchange the ideas and this passion as well. So the question that I ask myself, and I think you should ask yourself too, and it's usually a bit of a blur, is what is Internet of Things? And there are around 11 definitions that I found out on the Internet. Uh, if you take one approach, which is more uh, platonic, and go with the definitions, we can easily find a definition on Wikipedia. I think that will be our first choice. So we will go there and find out that there is some things that are connected and exchange some informations, and they have some unique identifier, so we know which things talk to which system. But if we are more in a kind of business mood, maybe we go maybe to Gartner and take their definition. It's slightly smaller pack for managers. Managers do not like to read a lot, so this will satisfy their appetite for definition. But if you are not satisfied, you can even go to a European research cluster of IoT. I was amazed that this actually exists. And they have their definition as well. So, a lot of definitions, and that's what makes this whole sense of what is actual Internet of Things a bit difficult for us, as well to other ordinary people to grasp. But we can take a different metaphysic approach and go with more Aristotle type of thinking and, and think about transitions and go with Genesis. So how we come to this? And in a sense, we can track that to Nikola Tesla, who 100 years ago, even more, predicted that there will be a wireless exchange all over the globe that will connect us in a one huge, hopefully smart brain. But the actual term of what is the Internet of Things was come to this guy, Kevin Ashen from MIT, who presented his work to a Procter & Gamble some 15 years ago, and he said that basically we are not good as in uh, activities that include uh, precision and timely fashion and sensing the data of the real things. And it would be much better if there are machines that can do that job for us and from that work we will get a new value. They will do that better and we will only be good for us. But the modern vision of Internet of Things is even go beyond what Nikola Tesla has envisioned and nowadays beside the brains it also includes uh, limbs and organs and internal and external functionalities. So it became more than a human in a sense. And still it's, it's a bit puzzling what that actually means. So, all the definitions and all the 
visions and reports include these components that you see on the screen as a basic elements of systems that describe the Internet of Things. We have these physical objects and if you compare to the previous era, the Internet era, all the content was produced by humans and currently we are browsing the content that was produced almost exclusively by humans. But the era that we are living today or start living today and we're living uh, in the future is the era that most of information will be not generated by us. Other things will be generating informations and these sensors and things will generate the informations. They will send their statuses. We will change the statuses. They will send us the information that will produce some actions and some actors, some motors or whatever, we do some actual work. They will also in in include some virtual type of things, like maybe your electronic wallet. There is no such things. You cannot put it in your pocket. It's just a virtual thing that helps you, even today. There is also a most crucial part that distinguishes this Internet of Things from previous thoughts about machine-to-machine -machine communication, and that's people, that's you, that's me, that's us. We will be influenced by the sensor in this room that will tell us which chair is occupied, which chair is not. The humidity of this room, the, the lighting of this room, that all sensors will be send them information and will react on them and they will react on us. And you always almost be in the position that you enter in the room and then when you step in, the lights go on. And you step out, the lights go down. It's not uh, science fiction, it's already here. You experience that. There is also uh, services that we even use today, platforms that we partially use today, and most important for all these to be working is uh, networks. And I don't think only the internet, I think all the networks. I think that some of you know that uh, average car like BMW, call it an average, has around 150 pieces of software in it. And it operates in three different networks. So inside the vehicle you have three different networks exchanging the information about the status of your vehicle and your driving activities. And yes, it will be connected on the internet. In 2020, it is expected that the most manufacturers will be producing the vehicles that will be connected to the internet. And you will be the systems that will use that information. And some of you hopefully will get that information about my driving habits. And um, not tell everything how I drive especially not to insurance companies. I like to drive a bit faster. <laughs> so, in a sense, this is what the basic blocks of Internet of Things are. And in a sense that I would like to share with you some small demo that will bring you and show you the gut feeling of what is Internet of Things. So you can sense it without knowing definitions, without knowing the visions, even without knowing the basic building blocks. You can sense it if you share this demo with me. Hopefully it works. So I create a small game. You will navigate your mobile device browser to a URL that I will give you in a, in a sec and you will be presenting with a big square in a randomly generated color, especially for you. And you will have this red marker that will generally show you the orientation of your device. So, basic on your orientation of device, we will play a game. And we will show your player 
on this type of dashboard. So you will be on this dashboard and each of your player with a particular color will be presented there. And if you navigate the orientation of your device, this marker, this player will move. Since there was a European basketball championship a few weeks back, there is a hoop for you, so try to make a score there. It's just a simple goal. For easier to get the URL, this is the URL that you should navigate your mobile browser. And then we can play a small game. I hope that the internet will work in this. Just as I can get to the screen as well, since you all, you all have get it. And I, I just want to say, have you sensed a bit of vibration when you have been connected to the server? That's also a sensor that I utilize. Not that I pick your orientation of your device, I also engage with the vibration functionality. So when the connection was established, I just trigger your phone to vibrate but I cannot trigger my dashboard to show off. Let's try again. Oh, here it is. So let's see if we can see some balls going on. So try, because it was just a delay, your balls are all over the place, so try to navigate or make it like start again. Let's see if... Or you can reload the page, maybe that will help as well. <laughs> nope. Let's try one more time and then we will move on. Oh, there is some blue dot. So 3G works? Okay, never mind. So you get a sense how you navigate your device. You will then see the balls try to move from this corner, hopefully to this basket. But as always, the live demo can have its mind of its own. Let's try just one more time and see if it works. If not, we will move on. Wi-Fi is kind of uh, overloaded here. So let me try to switch my connection. Ah. Not good. <laughs> okay. You ruined my demo. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so let's move on. And we will come back to the demo later and I will show you nevertheless. So, what is the current state of Internet of Things? And as you saw that even in my dream and some examples, the Internet of Things is already here, but it's still in its early stage. Most of the companies that you are working with or the projects you are working with involve pieces that are building blocks that somehow are meant to be utilized in these solutions that are for Internet of Things. And the building blocks are, for instance, location-based services. If you collect the data about the location of your customers, they go and pick your stuff from your web application, then generally you take a sensor and get data from the sensor and based on the data you make some decisions. Still yet not in a sense that Internet of Things will be like the decisions will be not made so much by humans but mostly be made by Let's call it uh, robots. <laughs> it's nice things. Uh, or the machines. You also analyze that data. And uh, from one research, uh, around 60% of the companies are getting some data from the users and their activities. But unfortunately, currently, only 20% of them analyze that data. We are like in a early stage of gathering, but not even in the early stage of understanding the data. And some of the companies here in Serbia and you are in a business of making sense of that data. And Internet of Things is about analyzing everything. And by everything, I actually mean everything. As you see on the slide, there was a small town and all the connected devices was the, at the number of the people in that small town. And currently, as of the beginning of the year, there are three times more devices than people on the planet. But predictions are quite different. <laughs> The, the image that I took here is an image that shows one day of Internet activity. All the servers that were communicated are somehow put on this image and you can see the most red color means more activities. That doesn't mean that others are there is no activity at all, but it means that there is less activities than this kind of hot areas. In the current situation, we have these three types of solutions that are currently implemented. We have these smart connected products, and some of you are lucky ones that has maybe a smart watch or has um, maybe something that is measuring your steps. And you notice that I'm walking all the, all the time because my nutrition told me so. I have to lose calories. And there is also a smart connected uh, operations, especially in transportation. The, they want to keep their stock at the optimum level, so they monitor the movement of the vehicles and where is their merchandise in particular moment and they try to optimize the what is known as a salesman path. And something that was shocking to all and especially to a business people, we saw some new destructive business models. And one of my favorite example of that is Uber. And if you think about it, why it's so destructive is because it was built in a place 
that people cherish their vehicles more than they cherish anything else. It was a status symbol. It was necessity to have a vehicle. And yet, they are willing to share it. It was something that nobody can imagine that people will do. And even that a small percentage of people that are kind of more open-minded will even share that vehicle with somebody who is in need. Nobody expects that it will be a huge success. Currently, Uber has a revenue that is more than co all taxi companies, including the limo companies in Europe, combined. It's huge. It's new. It's totally unimaginable. There are some surveys and there are a lot of companies that deal with the business and try to figure out what is expected and try to navigate their customers to get more revenue if they share them uh, expertise in this area. So they produce this uh, survey and current state shows that there are a lot of companies that are involved in Internet of Things type of solution building, but they are still in a silo type of fashion. They are working in verticals. They take one vertical and they try to satisfy what is the current need of that vertical. There are some rules in that vertical, so health has one set of rules, protocols, devices, way of doing things and way of business models. The other verticals like vehicles and automotive have different type of rules. So they try to squeeze in a, in a vertical, try to make some buck by adopting to the current needs. But the needs are changing and what we'll see in a nearby future is that there will be solutions that are spreading all over. There will be more horizontal integration when there is a current one. But if you go and dive some deeper, and for instance, I take the health as a topic, mostly because I am so engaged in taking care of my health nowadays, not only by my wish. There are also the same situation. You see a lot of companies, and they are dealing with one part, but there are no a lot of companies that are spread all over between different compartments in this vertical. So you have this remote monitoring and people currently use the glucose sensor that you can take with you under your smartwatch and monitor your glucose 24 seven. You have a smart insulin pumps that you put on your body and uh, insulin level in your uh, bloodstream will be kept in optimum all the time. It's totally different approach than the current system that you take an insulin shot, the insulin level goes a bit down than the optimum and they'll try to raise up and go about optimum and in a couple of hours it reaches the equilibrium. But current implementation with this smart sensing of the glucose level with this smart connected insulin pump can keep your insulin level on the optimal level all the day. And also it can sense the data of your glucose level to your physician. So not only that you will be in the same position that I am when I go to nutrition and try to explain how my day looks like and how many meetings I have during this day and how they are spread all over, they will sense all the needs and all the sugar rush that I have during the one day. And they will know how to make this nutrition regime for me to satisfy that need. So I will not rush to my refrigerator all the time, maybe overeating myself because I have that rush. They will try to somehow balance that. And yes, I like sweets a lot. There is no Internet of Things presentation between, uh, be, uh, that doesn't include this butterfly type of chart. And I 
thanks since this year in Mobile World Congress in Barcelona was all about uh, wearables, so a lot of smart watches. There is almost no OEM that doesn't have any kind of smart watch. Uh, I deliberately take this one out of many that shows uh, different sectors and different type of products and application in each sector. So on one side you have safety and security type of applications and gadgets and on the other side you have a glamour. So if you want to have something that sparks on you when you go and the, do these keynote presentations, you can take a verbal from this section. And all the companies that try to do this type of charts and uh, uh, try to show you what is currently present and where the industry is going. But what is emerging in front of us is yes, we are in the early stage and yes, it's just emerging, but is disturbingly make our world different in a huge pace. Almost every day you have a new startup that has either a small device that will connect it, that can turn your bubble in your house on and off. There is a huge success like Raspberry Pis, but maybe the most important thing that you should take from this keynote is that everything that can be connected will be connected. And even the chairs in this room will send their status. Are you satisfied how you're sitting in this, in this chair? How you wiggle a lot? Is this chair still has its softness? That will be kind of information that will send to a managerial type of application so they know which chair should go in maintenance. Should we change the chair or not? There is no need for somebody to go from one chair to another and check the softness of it. You will be the one to do that when you go to see a movie or a keynote. Why is this important? It's not about technology. It's about revenue. We need to make our living and that's the fact. Some people are more in technology, some people are more in business, some people like to make money. And these predictions are made for all of us. And yes, they predict there will be around 50 billion devices connected by the 2025, so 10 years from now, less. And yes, there will be around 4 to 11 trillion dollars in this business. The, the money that will be floating in this Internet of Things type of solutions and devices and services will be in this range. And Proctor and Gamble are not the company that make predictions that are not pretty accurate. That's their business. So if you take any any section of it, human health, bit important. We have around almost 1,500 billion dollars of investment and money in these projects. Vehicles, as I said, they will be here in a four years' time. We'll have around 740 tops. The question is not about who will get the most, because somehow the factories are big and expensive. They engage a lot of money. Smart cities as well. There's no comparison between retail and smart cities. But the question you should ask is, why should I care? Was it in it for me? That is the question. If that is, this is a prediction, 
where I'll be in a five years time, ten years time? What will be my skill set? Do I have the skill set? Should I learn a new trick? Will I be still a desirable employee in this nearby future? Do I learn what is needed here? That's what these predictions are. So, in order to be a successful, the Internet of Things needs adoption. And the adoption will help happen one way or the other. There will be some disturbance, like this migration crisis that we have today. It will disturb the, the economics of the world, but it will pass and we will move on. And most important for us, there will be some technical areas that need to be improved. And the uh, areas that I think is the mo most important for us is interoperability. Maybe something in a, in a new hardware and software type of fashion, but also standards and regulations. They are the, somehow the constraints and the frame that actually rule our lives. So, the enablers that are needed and they are really working on currently, improving every day, are the software and hardware ones. Interoperability, as I said, intellectual property security, changing of business, organization, and culture, as well as regulation and public policies. And that means mostly government and standardization bodies. For software, we need cheap, easy to use, pluggable things. Nothing special, we all know that. We all sing the same song and uh, maybe important stuff that is not so being present before is this security. Security, personal information become a huge topic. Both for the com community, but also individually for ourselves. We will share the data and the data will be given freely, but we want to share it in a secure way so the data will not be misused. And we want to share data. I want to give my glucose level to my physician. He will help me to stay healthy as much as I could. But I don't want to share that data to insurance company, maybe. Unwillingly. Maybe I will share if I want to, if that's an, my need. But I will not be so pleased if, for instance, insurance company or some marketing company came come to information about my glucose level and, for instance, marketing company just fill me with enough marketing material about the sweet stuff. They will ruin my willingness not to eat sweet stuff. As I said, intellectual property is uh, one of the key areas that we will deal in and you will deal in. My, my thought is that you will be the ones that we will build this new world. There is also need to change the way we are conducting businesses and culture. And most of the operations will become more diverse. We will step out of our niches when we feel confident. We will interact with another people that are dealing with another stuff. One of the things that you have seen so far was the emerging notion of DevOps. It was not present a couple of years back. Now it's a huge thing. Now it's not enough for you to be just a developer. Now you have to know how to deploy things. Now you have to know how to monitor what you have been deployed. Now you have to know how to analyze what you have been monitored, what you have been deployed. It's your daily job. It's how you will 
build your architecture upon because you will know where you will be deploying your stuff. It's not enough that you have one desktop. It's not an issue. Nobody builds a desktop application anymore, at least not on a large scale. Even the, the deployment on a mobile device will not be the stuff. Cloud is your future habitat. Distributed system is your future habitat. Microservices, protocol, security is your future habitat. And yes, as a humans that lives in um, cities and countries, we also are in need of new regulations. And we have to push our governments as well as standardization bodies to embrace this era of new things, connected things, exchanging data. We need to somehow work with our government to our government, and by mean the global one, not just Serbian government, but all of them, even the Serbian will be a special case most probably. We have to deal with them to somehow keep them in a pace that they are following the need of these new technologies emerging, new businesses, new opportunities that we are ha having. And the key opportunities that we will be investing in, and you should think about it when you do your daily job or do your hobbies, are how you design things. How you test things? Maybe that's even more important. How you prove that what you have designed actually works in a way that you want to work, in a way that your customer wants to work, in a way it's secure and doesn't ruin my privacy. Where we build the things is also important, as well as how we feed our systems and how we read the statuses for him. And that includes the messages that we are passing back and forth. All of that will be the places that you will show your creativity, your wisdom, your gut sense. That will be your playground. And yes, as I mentioned, data and analytics of everything will be a key to success. There is no doubt about it. All the businesses, all the business analysts see that there is some kind of gold in the data and we have to take it and yes we are not there yet so the question I want to ask you and I want you to ask yourself where are you going to be are you going to be the successful ones the ones that are building this new future that are feeling this as a, your home, your habitat, or maybe not. And since you are younger than me, most of you are, I think the answer is pretty easy. So I would like to stop here and open for questions and answers. Is there a company to, that collects data currently about location-based services in the audience? Any co company that collects data about geolocation of people that use your application or website? Is there a company that uses Google Analytics for collecting the data about who has visited your website? Probably not. <laughs> You're not allowed to say. Anyhow, I wish you a great conference. I wish you to applause once again to organization of this conference. Great guys, put a huge effort, and I wish you to all to enjoy the conference all together. Thank you very much.